Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Agent Skills. So this is a new release from Anthropic yesterday, which is kind of interesting because this is a, a whole new take on building agentic capabilities and distributing agentic capabilities. Now, keep in mind, Anthropic already has been crushing it in this particular area with their MCP servers, which is now widely adopted. And when this got released yesterday, I actually started to think, you know, what is the difference between an MCP server, which technically has prompts, tools, and resources? Why are they going in the skills direction? But looking into it and diving deep into it, I think I kind of get a sense of why they're going in this direction. So in today's video, we're going to be going through what agent skills means and how you can be using this to build your own agents. So right off the bat, from Anthropic's perspective, they're saying that skills allow you to focus on specific tasks. And for me, I would say like the key word here is specific tasks. I think with typical agentic behavior, when you give an MCP server or you give a set of tools to an agent, the agent makes a decision as to whether they want to use that specific tool or not and things of that nature, right? But here, this is almost about having something that is repeatable. So when you're building your agent and you really want it to follow a set of instructions, a set of scripts, and you want to provide it with resources to do something really specific the same way all the time, this is when you want to use skills. So this is really going to be powerful for organizations who are building agentic solutions as well, uh, where you really want to repeat the exact thing. Now, some of the examples they've given include things like, you know, if you want to do like brand guidelines, so if you want to build something um, that is really, really specific, like MCP servers and stuff like that. Now they've released a bunch of um, skills inside their uh, inside like a uh, cloud and and by the way, this is available for you to use um, Across the entire sort of surface area of Anthropic so you could use this in cloud You can use it in cloud code and you can also use an API Which we'll be diving into shortly so you could see exactly how you could use these tools So right off the bat, let's go ahead and check this out I think the easiest way to actually check it out is to go straight into um, into cloud itself and see how it works. Now to activate this, you need to go into your settings and you need to go into capabilities and right in capabilities, you will see the skills. And here you would see a bunch of skills that have been added. I've added like a custom skill myself and I'll show you a little bit about how you can create a custom skill. But these are the skills that have come together with the solution. So. The one that actually excites me is this MCP builder. So I'm going to be trying it out as well. And of course, they've made it possible for you to be able to upload your own skills as well. All right. So let's check out the Slack GIF creator. I'm going to say create a Slack GIF emoji that represents someone coding. Right off the bat, you start to see a few things. Now, one of the things I've noticed, like, just using this particular thing is that it goes to the skill MD. Now I'll show you sort of what the structure of a skill looks like because it's a folder that contains files, which, which are like instructions contains also some scripts that can be run and you can see already like this is the very first piece is going into the skill.md file of this particular skill and is reading basically instructions on how to create a Slack GIF emoji. Now it's going and using the coding underscore emoji script to also create a GIF. So you can see it right here is basically going in and saying coding underscore emoji dot pi. And it's using this information to actually create the emoji. And it's going to go all the way until it actually finalizes the actual emoji. What I've found with this is that a lot of times agents can make decisions on what tools to call or what tools to use and things of that nature, but this really stays on script. So really important for those scenarios where you want some determinism or some sort of consistency in the way you want your agent to behave. Right. So there we go. I mean, it's 
done a pretty good job, I would say, like reasonably well. It's created this emoji, this GIF emoji of a coding uh, thing. I mean, I think there's some weirdness going on with symbols and things like that. I'm sure they were supposed to be maybe inside uh, the screen, but it's, it's, it's kind of a little off, but still remarkable. But what has actually happened is it's gone through using that skill.md file I talked about to understand the instructions and how to create the emoji. And then it's using the scripts that have been provided to actually create the emoji itself. So it's really cool to see uh, some of the possibilities here in terms of how this can be used to do a lot of interesting things. Now, they've made this available in cloud code as well, but I wanted to just show you very, very quickly how to kind of think through what the structure of a, a scale folder should look like. So these are all scales with the agent and you have some MCP servers. It basically spins up a whole new virtual machine, which has like a file system, right? Which includes like the skills, right? In each skill, you're going to have like a skill.md file. And then you're going to have like some scripting files as well in some cases, right? So here, for instance, with the PDF one, you have skill.md, you have forms.md, you have reference.md extract fields as well. So everything basically runs in its own virtual machine and it runs in a specific sequence. That's really the big thing about skills. The difference between skills and using just MCP servers or using tools is that you're giving your, your agent the ability to execute a task almost like with a sub agent that is doing something really, really specific. So that's why the skill.md file is so important. All right. So I've been trying to create a skill actually over the past day. Uh, so, but basically here are a few things you need to know about creating a skill. So you need the skill.md file and in here you have to have a name for your um, skill. So in this case, I'm, I'm creating like an open AI apps SDK builder. I want something that helps me build open AI apps really quickly. And if you kind of think about open AI apps, and by the way, you can check out my video on how to build open AI apps using the SDK. There are a few components. There's sort of the MCP server itself, but there's also like the UI component side of things. So I want something that actually helps me build out the ideas that I have. So here you could see that I have the actual name of the app, a description, and then if, as you kind of go through, you could see exactly an overview of what this, the skill is all about, when to use the skill and some of the core concepts that the skill is um, going to be leveraging. So in this case, talking about MCP servers, talking about UI component, talking about metadata um, and talking about like how it works, talking about some architectural patterns, some widgets. And by the way, you can build out a skill using Claude itself. So this skill, like I started building it out using Claude. I had to make some adjustments after it spat out this uh, project, but for the most part, it was able to kind of get things going. Then, you know, it even gave like, it gives like, you, you pro provide like a project structure, for instance, which shows like exactly how you expect the project to look like. The key thing here, as you notice, is that you want an extensive explanation of how to go about satisfying the specific task you're trying to build. And then after that, you also can add scripts. So I have scripts for testing the data, for checking for cores, for scaffolding the project, you know, so you, if you want those things to run in a specific sequence, or you want them to run in a specific way, you can create scripts for them and also adding examples as a resource for it to take a look at an existing example of what I'm expecting it to do and actually follow those steps as well. Once you're done with it, you zip it up. And once you zip it up, you can go ahead and upload it into your cloud as a skill. So right under skills, you can just really upload a skill. Now that's all well and good. You can have your skills inside cloud, but what if you're building an application and you want to give, you know, your agent a skill. So we're going to explore how the API works. I'm going to drop this uh, particular project into the tutorials uh, project on my GitHub repo. I'm going to share that in the description below. So the skills API just allows you to essentially use the skills. So you could um, basically 
attach a skill to your anthropic call calls so that um like in this case as an example we can you know attach a powerpoint skill and i'm going to show you exactly how this works and that would allow this to execute this particular skill now when your skill is done doing the work it's going to have some files so you'll be able to download those files and then use those files as well right so they've released a bunch of apis uh create list get delete skills so for you to be able to manage your skills so i'm going to be showing you exactly how to work with those apis so let's go look at them i've added a few of them here so let's go over how to use your skills api to interact with the skills capabilities so here we have uh the first one listing your skills so here we're we're basically initializing our anthropic all the skills are paginated so if you want to get the very first page basically uh, you can just set, set page um, and you pass in skills dash 2025 uh, 1002 it's a beta right now so everything is sort of under this sort of beta flag uh, just keep that in mind um, and then you can loop through all the pages and then it prints it out. So let's just basically run this. So list skills and you can see all the skills that we have. Four skills come out of the box and all of them are basically for creating different file formats. So creating a spreadsheet, creating PowerPoints, PDF and Word documents. I've also added like a custom skill, uh, the one that we looked at earlier on. I've added it as well. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can add that too. Now, each of these skills have an ID right so you could pass that id to retrieve a skill as well so in this case we can retrieve our powerpoint skill in this particular way so i'm going to go ahead and run this one so let's clear this so uv run src slash get skill dot py and this is just going to go go ahead and return one of the skills you also have the ability to delete skills but you can also create a skill. Now, the easiest way to create a skill from what I have seen so far is just simply passing the skill that you've created. So here we have a folder here that contains my skill. And all I'm doing is just basically passing in that folder and that just basically creates the skill. Now, how do you use a skill? So now we've created the skills and that's amazing, but how do you use a skill? So this is how you use a skill. Uh, first and foremost, you want to initialize your Anthropic client, passing your API key. Th these tend to be long running operations. So keep that in mind when you're building this out. Uh, because they are and usually there are a few things to keep in mind when you're using the skill I think you're going to be working with files so you want to be able to capture the file so that there's a file system from Anthropic so every time a skill completes its task it sends that file to the file system you need to be able to go extract the file ID from the response and then download that file so that's what we have here it's just a function to extract the file IDs and this is basically how you get started now I think I would suggest that you stream because it's a long running process so i'm using the cloud sonnet 4.5 here and we're using the streaming function now um, you need to pass this beta uh, flag right here and you need to pass in code execution skills and files and remember to use the beta flag as well here now the key thing that is different from the way you might have used anthropic in the past is this container attributes because this container attributes allows you to pass in one or more skills that you want to use so here we have our skill and we're using the powerpoint skill in this case and then you have your messages as normal and then for tools you're using this code execution with this date and the name is code execution that's essentially it. That's all you need to do to pass in your skill to use this uh, programmatically. Create a one slide presentation about MCP servers. Let's try this one instead. I'm going to save this and then we're going to do a UV run SRC slash use.py. So we're going to run it. Now you're going to start to see exactly how it thinks about running these things. So it says, I need to create a PowerPoint presentation about MCP servers. Let me read the relevant skill file now. So now 
it's going into that skill.md file, which is a part of what the PowerPoint skill has, and it's gonna read about it. Now also, one of the things they mentioned, I think when they explain how to use skill, if you go into the documentation, is that if you have like maybe URLs where there's some documentation, you can pass that as part of your skill information to say, go read this documentation, because it can do the tool call, it can go do a fetch or here is a resource that I want you to go take a look at. And in this case, it's HTML to ppt.md, which is where all of the information about how to create a PowerPoint slide. In this case, I think they're using the approach where you create an HTML first, and then you convert that HTML to a PowerPoint slide. So this typically takes a little bit of time. So I'm gonna pause it and you're just gonna see how it reasons through the process. I'm gonna pause it for now and wait until this has been completed. All right, so now it's actually gonna ahead and completed the task of creating our PowerPoint slide here. So you can see it's kind of, it went through all the, the entire process. Now, I actually told it to just do a one slide presentation because I wanted it to be able to complete very, very quickly. We've also, you know, kind of downloaded the file directly. So you can see our MCP Sour PowerPoint right here. I'm just going to go ahead and check it out. So this is what I created which is pretty cool. I mean, I think creating PowerPoints is one of those things that is always very challenging in terms of how to do it. And it's doing a pretty cool job for PowerPoint presentations. So you can see the MCP server. It's talking about what MCP servers are. It's, you know, talking about key benefits, common uses and open standards. So amazing, like really cool outputs right here and we're able to kind of capture it immediately. So this is exactly what skills allow you to do. And every single time you run this is always going to be consistent. So I, that's the big difference. So keep that in mind as you're building. If you're building agents that require a little bit more structure than Claude skills or agent skills is the way to go. Well, curious to see what you build with skills moving forward. Until next time, do have a great one. Cheers.